what is the latest you can tell us about the situation right now uh, with the recent shelling of civilians in, uh, in Ganja, uh, in a region that was far removed from the conflict zone? What is the latest you can tell us about that, and what do you think motivated Armenia to take such brutal actions? Despite the human agreement which, during the meeting of the foreign ministers of the Azerbaijan and Armenian Moscow, Armenian armed forces continued to cross to violate the agreement. Uh, just a few hours later, Armenian armed forces tried to attack in the direction of Hadrut and Jabraya, and a medical worker was seriously injured as a result of shooting by the Armenian armed forces of a sanitary medical vehicle. And on the night of the first of the strike on October 11th, Armenian armed forces shelled civil objects and civilians in Ganja. This is the second largest city in Azerbaijan and far beyond, hundreds of kilometers away from the battlefield. And the attack killed 10 civilians and injured 40 others, and including minors. And later on, on 17th October, as a result of rocket fire on civilians, 13 people, including children and a woman, died, and 52 people were injured. And numerous civil infrastructure and vehicles were seriously damaged. And of course, this is the war crime, and someone has to stop Armenia. And Armenia still wants to keep fighting, because during the self-defense operation of armed forces Azerbaijan, we have successfully managed to implement UN security resolutions and liberated some occupied territories. And Armenian political military leadership could not cope with this reality and does not want to stop fighting, because the parents of the dead Armenian soldiers demanding Pashinyan's resignation. Um, to your point, actually, was my next question. Where, um, like I said, like I asked, what, what do you think motivated uh, Armenia to take uh, such actions? Because it, there have been some people who've said these moves are ma are being made out of desperation, where Armenia is perhaps um, not attacking what they want, but whatever they can right now. And the desperation, some people say, that may be coming from um, the country's own internal political unrest. What, uh, what can you tell us more in detail about the internal political unrest in Armenia, especially in terms of the administration of uh, Pashinyan and what uh, threats he faces, and what, which is why, why is he reacting in such a way, in desperation? Thank you very much for the question. And I think, uh, actually, I consider this question is the most important one because I believe even some regional analysts, uh, political analysts, believe that uh, that provocations based on the reason that, that happened what happened in Armenia. Can you imagine, imagine a country where criminal investigation were launched for previous to ex-president? And currently some regional political analysts indicate that the main of these deliberate provocations could be divert attention from the serious socio-economic problems in Armenia. At the moment, Armenia is in a state of deep uh, socio-economic crisis as a result of COVID-19. I heard from the news yesterday, yesterday 1,650 people infected COVID-19 in Armenia. And even before the COVID-19 pandemic hit the country, Prime Minister Nikol Pashinyan also had an intense political struggle with the representative of former political elites. Following that, Armenian opposition leader, the Kajik Surkanyan, was stripped of his immunity. He was MP and he placed in detention on 26 September 2020. Surkanyan, the leader of second biggest faction in the parliament, denies any wrongdoing and says his prosecution was a political order by Prime Minister Nikol Pashinyan. You know, uh, we can say lots of reasons, but I think uh, somebody has to look at these reasons. Why this happened? Why this? Uh, what led escalation in the front line? And we believe that uh, the, due to domestic problems and social economic crisis, led the Pashinyan government's uh, deliberate provocations in front line. Absolutely. So now, speaking about the international response to this crisis right now, um, how do you evaluate the French stance on this conflict in particular and the European stance in general um, relating to this? Um, you know, uh, considering, legally speaking, this is, uh, this is Azerbaijan's territory, yet why is it that there are certain, uh, certain Western countries that are choosing to stay neutral or in some ways um, supporting um, military um, in terms of giving weapons support or something to Armenia. Why is that? What, what is, how do you evaluate, especially the French stance on this issue in general? I believe that currently international perception is that uh, Azerbaijan is in the right side of history and is within the international law. Uh, regarding the France, we have 
high levels government and French people. We understand that, but you should know that his statements is against his mandate in OECD Miscor. However, uh, shortly after his statements, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of France declared that France should stay natural, and somehow they took back the Macron statement. Um, if you're talking about the perception of the EU, uh, the EU high-level uh, representative Joseph Borrell just yesterday uh, supported uh, territorial integrity of Azerbaijan, and he, in his reply to the deputies of the European Parliament, said that EU and its member countries remain committed to the peaceful resolution of the, this conflict within the international law, taking into consideration UN Security Council resolutions, which is in our side. 